And validating the request data in REST APIs can get very messy, especially when you're validating big objects with a lot of different scenarios. For example, look at this. That is why some very smart people came up with JSON schema validation and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the AHV package specifically. You might be wondering why you need to use schema validators like this. There's one very important principle in web development, and that is never trust user input. Trusting user input can put you in some interesting situations. That's why it's important to validate the input before you process it, or especially before you mutate your databases. Now let's open up VS Code and actually show you how you can use AHV schema validation on your REST API. I've got a simple REST API here set up. I'm using sbuild to build. It's using the KOA REST uh, package for actually having a REST API running. And that's running here. Um, I have one root, which is basically just slash, nothing else. And then in here, I'm getting the stuff from the request and validating it with if and else statements. So let's just run through these uh, quickly. So I'm passing an email, password, and username. I expect all of them to be defined and I expect all of them to be uh, a string. And you can see I'm checking the email. If it's not defined, then I return this message. Then I'm checking if it's not a string, then I return this message and so on and so on. And then at the end, if there's no errors, I'm saying the user was created successfully. If there was errors, this will fail and show me the error messages. Now let's send the request. So this is a request to my local host. I'm sending an email, username and password, like all the, the if and else statements expect. When we run this, we can see the user was created successfully, which means there was no errors. Now let's try and not send the password. You can see user creation failed and the password is required. So this essentially works. But imagine you have an object for a full user, like the name, the address, the job title, or all kinds of stuff. And this can get very big very fast if you're validating with if and else statements. Let's also try the number thing. There we go. Username must be a string. If we use the HV schema validation package, this will all be simplified very nicely, and you can see how in a minute. So I've updated my app here to use HV. So if we go in the index.ts now, we can see that basically this is using the odd validation factory that I've defined in another file. We can go there in a minute. But this actually runs the validation and returns the, the body back to, to the user. Let's go in the validator. Now this is the function that actually runs the validation. There's a schema which I've defined, and this is a JSON schema there's a lot of different packages that use this format, but uh, let's run through this quickly. So my schema expects the properties of username, email, and password, all of them to be a string. And this is a description for those fields. And the password, I want the minimum length and the max length to be between eight and 24. And I also want all of these three fields to be required in the, in the request. Now, the validator is trying to validate the data using that schema and returning back the message or any errors encountered. So let's try this now. Okay, this if it's successful, this just returns the input. So this means the, the validation was successful, there was no issues. Let's move on to the fields. Now this is the kind of error that AHV returns back. It gives you a lot more information about the issue. Now, again, if this was a big object with a lot of sub objects and whatever, it, this helps find where the issue is exactly. And this says must have property password. Okay, now let's bring back password, but let's try and send just one letter. Now, this again fails because the minimum length for the password field was eight characters. I think the maximum is 24, so let's try and write something much larger. There we go, limit 24, must not have more than 24 characters. As you can see, you, I can expand the schema here a lot bigger, but I don't have to change this function. And actually there's a lot of packages online that already have a function like this that provides you there. This is basically 
running the validation and returning back any errors. That's all this does. You can get packages to use this. You don't have to define yourself. But you can expand the schema a lot bigger and make it a lot more complicated if there's any kind of rules for your um, request. So I've changed the schema here a little bit. Now I have an email, a subject, and a curriculum. I've set the subject to be an enum of any of these three values, which means any other value will be um, an error. And then the only required field is an email, but then I have a dependent required field, which if I provide a subject, then I have to provide the curriculum. But this is, for whatever reason, you have to do this in your application. Now let's try this see I'm gonna send only the subject only the email here first and let's see what this does cool no errors now let's send the subject okay that says, it says dependent required must have property clicker where property subject is present cool Let's try to send something else here. Okay, this says the must be equal to one of the allowed values, which are one of these. There we go. Now this works. And like I said, the only thing I've changed to make this work was updating the schema. And you can add if else statements here. You can add one of or any of. You can make it a lot more complicated. Well, essentially everything you need to do in your um, schema validation. You see the simplicity of using a validation package like this. It allows you to validate big objects and you can expand the schema a lot bigger than what I've done here. There's lots of different schema validation packages out there. The one I used in this example is called AHV, but there's alternatives out there like Yap or Zod or Joy or Superstruct. And you don't always have to validate a JSON input. You can validate any kinds of different things using these schema validators. You can basically validate anything that can be turned into a JSON object. For example, CSV files can be converted to JSON objects and, and therefore you can validate CSV files. Here's an example of that. There's a package actually called csval, which is validation of CSV uh, files to match a JSON schema. And you can use this if you need to validate the, the contents of a CSV file. You can use the same for JSON files and whatever, but there's other packages for that. This is just if you need to validate the CSV file. Basically, the schema here says, I need to have properties name, job, and age. All of them need to be a number and all of them need to be required. Pretty simple schema. Again, um, this is just to show an example. And then it's using the parse CSV function from the CSV package which basically sends the contents of the file and it's trying to validate the, the contents of the file based on the rules, which is a schema. If there's any error, it's gonna throw an error, uh, it's gonna catch it and return it back to the user. And if there's no error, it's just gonna return that it's valid or not. So I have a file here, which has a couple of rows and it has all the required fields. Now this is supposed to be a number, but I've written down the, num the number as uh, a string and let's see how this works now oh there we go it throws an error it says row 3 age must be a number and we can go back to our file fix this save and let's try again valid true and there we have it simple way how you can validate a csv file using the package and the json validation schema there's also a lot of different packages made for client-side validation. For example, if there's a form that needs to be filled out, if you can transform the inputs into a JSON object, that means you can validate it using YAP or anything else. One good example is Formic, which is a package for building out forms. And you can validate the user input on these forms and actually show errors that are specific to each field, for example, like this. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned what schema validation is and how you can use it. I hope it gave you some ideas on different use scenarios. I personally really like using schema validators. I didn't always use them. I actually started using them very recently, which means in the past I always relied on if else statements and stuff like that to validate the input. But recently I realized these are great to use, very easy, and they're very worth learning how to use them. But yeah, I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching.
comment down below if you have any thoughts, any feedback. I go through all the comments on every video. That's it. Enjoy the rest of the day. Happy coding. Bye.